What up, cuz? Welcome to the week. Happy Monday. We're here for our anchor message. And if you are unfamiliar with that lingo, it just means that this is basically the bouillon that will flavor the week. This is like our foundational, um, the foundations of the lessons that we will be working with or the energies or the influences for the week. So that's what we'll be talking about. Uh, but first, I hope you guys had a good day. I had an amazing day. This was um, a day off for me. I got to go out and run and get a good sweat on and do some workouts and pay some bills and go to the grocery store. And I'm cooking right now. It's actually simmering a ground turkey and ginger dish. And I got the recipe from something Gabrielle Bernstein posted one time. It was just like a random recipe she shared. It was before she was doing her like food blogging stuff. And it's so good, it's one of my favorites. And so I was really excited that I got to use my own cilantro that I have been growing in my garden. And this is the first time I've gotten to eat my cilantro. Last week I enjoyed my basil with caprese salad. And if I'm mispronouncing that, um, you can laugh at me. I don't know, I've heard it a, a bunch of ways and I usually just try to mumble my way through it. Um, and me and my nephew were laughing about that the other day at the, at the restaurant. We were like, we hate it when like they are like giving us these details about these new dishes that come out like every couple nights. And it's like, we're trying to take notes and we're trying to listen and hear, but like sometimes it's just like they, they, they're talking about these obscure like ingredients that not everyone knows about. And so you're like, did they say, or was it, did I hear that right? And so you're trying to write it down. Everybody's trying to confirm and nobody wants to like, be the one to ask. And so me and uh, my nephew were talking about how awkward it is when you go to a table and you, and you start to talk about the dish. But then you come to the part where you realize you're, you're starting to mention that thing that you're not so sure about and you're trying to like mumble your way through it. And nevertheless, the guest is like, ooh, go in more about that. I want a lot more detail about that. What, what was that? How, how do you say it again? What, could you spell it for us? And you're just like, I, my aunt is very sick. I've got to run away right now. <laughs> so yeah on a tangent, can't even remember how we got there. I'm cooking my ginger dish. I am like, my hands are on fire. I, I just, it calls for green chilies, but there's never like consistent options where I am at the grocery store. So I just get whatever like good green pepper that they have that's not like jalapeno. And the ones that I got today, I de-seeded them just with my hands and I should have used a utensil. My hands are on fire. But then it got me thinking that I should actually buy some, de-seed them and like crush them down and mix them into like a lotion and use them for like, like, you know, joint and muscle like relaxer, like a tiger balm kind of thing. But that would be really good. Um, but yeah, enough about that. Caught y'all up on my day of getting my kingdom in order. So I'm really excited about our message for the week. So we had first King of Swords. So I asked, um, basically like, wh who are we in the context of this moment? And it was King of Swords. And then I was like, okay, well, like, what's the influence crossing us right now? And it was Ace of Swords. And then I was like, cool. Well what about that or what do we need? Is there an action we need to take or something more that we need to know about this? And the last card was 10 of swords. And so do you guys see this in the right order? One is king of swords, two is ace of swords and three is 10 of swords. So would it be like this for you guys? I feel like it's gonna be like the reverse of what I see. Okay, so I feel that when I take into account all of that context, I feel that we are in at the end of a very difficult period um, and cycle of like a lesson and a pattern that we've been like playing out over and over and over again, maybe for your whole life, maybe for the last several years, uh, whatever it is. I know there was um, a, a new Jupiter cycle starting and it's like a 12 year cycle. so. It could be something that's been going on for the last 12 years. 
Um, we also have Saturn in retrograde again this summer. And so I feel like I, I was born with my Saturn in retrograde. And if you were too, you might be affected by this um, retrograde, just going back and like really um, getting clear about being disciplined and focused on your life's purpose and your authentic path and your soul growth and the, and the, um, the evolution of your own particular soul that you came here in this life to do. Um, we all came here with like soul assignments. And so Saturn likes to come around and make sure that we have the structure and the form and the discipline and the restriction in place to be able to um, play out and live out that mission, right? So in this particular, you know, um, eclipse cycle, we were really moving out a lot of very old energy, very old negativity, um, old stored emotion from maybe even our earliest years of childhood. I really feel that this year is such a huge cycle change. It's not just like the small micro cycle changes within you know each year and each you know season and whatnot. It's like a big grand thing. And so I just think that this is a sign that we're at the end of a lesson. We've learned the lesson, we've got it. And you know, it could be that a lot of the things that we had hoped for didn't quite work out the way that we thought. Um, and maybe, you know, the forms that we thought certain dreams would show up in didn't show up like that. But it doesn't mean that they won't still happen. It just means that the, the cloak that it shows up in may be different than what you expected. And one, one of the things that I was thinking about that I don't know if I went into it in a lot of detail in our blog that is on Instagram and I'll copy and paste it into the description below. But <clears throat> I think that um, part of being able to get over this cycle and really start fresh with a different level of perspective and consciousness has to do with realizing like we're we're starting to see behind the curtain we're piercing the veil <clears throat> and we're starting to realize that like let me use my own job for an example i used to work in tv film and video production and i was i was a freelancer and so every single time i finished a gig and the gig might have been one day it might have been three days it might have been three weeks like but you were always without a job and having to find another job there's no stability in it at all and so you had to have nerves of still and just believe that that money was going to be there and it was some of the most stressful years of my life, but I will never trade them for anything because I learned that the moment I my I opened my heart and like extended my faith and like let my guard down enough to let myself trust that the money and the gigs were an illusion and that God, creator, source of all that is, was the was the grand you know orderer behind what I was receiving <clears throat> according to what I was asking for according to what where I was how how um how I was showing up in life and having affinity with those things right so I I started to understand that the moment I was totally secure in the fact that God had always provided for me that I'm still alive, that I've never starved to death, that I'm still here and still breathing. <clears throat> He's never forsaken me. He, she, it, that's why I like to say source, um, because we get hung up on languages um, and semantics, right? So the more that you understand that it's not the job the circumstances of the job are going to reflect whatever you need them to, to play out your avatar video game of soul growth for the day, right? God's in control. He knows what your bills are. He's going to... Uh, 
your, te your faith will be tested. <clears throat> but when you start passing the tests faster, things will get easier. So I used to have like terribly um, difficult financial fears and, and experiences. And because like their gigs would, you know, be inconsistent or they would be really consistent, but um, like I would have companies like pay me late or like my paperwork got lost and stuff. And so I was always just like trying to keep up. And um, there would be times where I was just like, oh my gosh, like, you know, it would get to that point where I'm like, I'm going to be with, I've got to pay these bills or whatever. And, um, and I was so fearful and I was like, had like fibromyalgia level fear. And when I told myself, okay, this is literally making you physically sick. You have got to pray about this. You have got to ask God to help you get through this and to help, you know, help you bring you in and provide and i realized like god god is the provider <laughs> like all of this is just like what the moment i believed and like let go of the fear and just put my mind on other things and was grateful and got myself in an elevated mood and trusted that that work would come <clears throat> and i would get in a in a faithful state about it and i would actually write it down i would write down in my journal book work and then sometimes within an hour, somebody would call me to book work. And so now I have gotten to the point where I am, you know, not as far along as I'd like to be, but I'm a lot more secure. And so when I go into the restaurant, the same kind of element exists there, but it's still a lot more secure than I used to be dealing with, right? So, um, you know, every shift is different and I can see that others there um, that haven't become a, like fully aware of that lesson are very um, stressed out when we don't have you know a very busy night or whatever but I've learned that it doesn't matter it's all an illusion that if I don't get caught up in the fear and I hold on to the certainty that I will be provided for and that I've never been forsaken and never been abandoned it's like all of a sudden the floodgates open up and I have like great cells and I have a great night right so <clears throat> we've learned that it's not the job that's giving us the money, right? It's, it's in the vortex, according to like the Abraham Hicks language. Like we have like a bounty that belongs to each of us and only us. And it's all there and it's ready for us the moment we need it or the moment that we align with our deservingness, our self-worth and our confidence and our uh, sort of grit and audacity to ask for it and uh, like ask for everything and desire with all your heart because you know the with, over the process of creation we will be tested with challenges you know um to see if we will persevere and push through um we talk about building the vessel and it's about um you know building that grit that faith that um that steadfastness over time you earn that but it doesn't come from getting things super easy it comes from investing yourself and um, commitment and devotion and spending time and energy and putting your resources into something and overcoming obstacles and challenges right so So we push through the challenges and that's how we get to the other side of the manifestation and we open ourselves up to align with what is ours and what is ours alone. And so when you know that everything is there waiting for you, it's already yours, then that puts you in a whole different mindset. Then you can start celebrating what is in your vibrational bank account and getting really grateful for it. And all of a sudden it's like you start having these little things that start showing up, which is very interesting. Um, but we got a, a tad sidetracked, but I mean, I think that that's true too for, um, like the cloak getting caught up in the cloak. Um, I remember one time I was, <clears throat> it was a long time ago. I was on acid and I was really weighing out like two romantic options and I was confused on if I was in the right situation or if I should go in another direction um and i remembered god appeared to me in a like connect the dots animation of a person through the sky and told me it doesn't matter who the guy is it's always me god showing up 
just the way that you need me to in that moment. God is always sending us the partner that we need to reflect back what needs to be evolved, what needs to be loved, what needs to be brought into the light. Um, <clears throat> and it doesn't matter who it is, it, that person can change, you know, over time. So it's good to, when you crack through that illusion that it's not what's physically presenting in front of you, but the vibration behind it, that is the real essence. You realize that like, oh, okay, creator is just bringing everything to me all the time and it doesn't matter what form it's showing up at. It doesn't have to come in, in the way I expect it to. It's going to come and it's going to probably be all the better and very exciting and funny and hilarious because it came from some magical way. So as the King of Swords, we are really getting a new mindset about things and we've seen the light and we've seen we've cut through the bullshit and we've cut through our bullshit and now we can cut through others bullshit as well and we don't suffer those fools lightly and we're sitting here having gained clarity and we have you know cultivated a a tranquil inner landscape and we have earned that and we have earned the sovereignty to not give our power away to anything or anyone else. And that what I mean by that is don't let someone invade your mental space and get your feathers ruffled and, and rob you of your joy and your time. Don't let the stress from work bleed into your experience with the people that you love once you are away from that situation. Don't let what someone else thinks of what you're doing affect what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, be in your own sovereignty. You have earned your own sovereignty. No one can tell you what you should think or how you should behave. You know, you don't need permission. You don't need validation. So many times in life, our subconscious tells us that we need validation from, oh, I need my parents to be proud of me and I need my siblings to understand me and I want my friends to respect me and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you really don't need anybody else's validation when you are so certain and sure of yourself and stand um, in balance and in union with, with what you know to be true. And that is that you are a, a, a piece of divine source energy manifested in this life to experience the world on behalf of the source and be a servant and be hands and feet and a mouth and experience on behalf of source and also serve on behalf of source, right? And it's a, it's a beautiful um, relationship. It's a beautiful symbiotic relationship. Um, but yes, so you are getting a lot more clear on who you are and what you stand for and what your values are and what your needs are and what your you know deal breakers and what you're not gonna deal with. And so you're not afraid to stand in that. And because of that, you're, you kind of have a whole new perspective and you're taking a whole new lease on things and you've break, broken all of those, not all of them, but you have gotten to a, the next level in many of your old patterns and old belief systems. You've cracked the code and you've released a lot. We all have, and it has been <laughs> arduous. And um, it hasn't been pretty, but I think that we're feeling a lot better. We're starting to. It's been difficult, and we feel a little bit like this chick. Uh, we're just like scrolling and like, is there anything left of my eye? But everything's good. We're starting fresh. We're starting new. Everything's exciting, and we have a new, uh, renewed sense of inspiration, clarity, focus, um, ambition, optimism, and drive coming in. We're very clear about what we want. We're very clear about what we stand for, what we don't stand for, what we value, and what we want to call in next. And so we know that we are holding out for what's true to us, and we are doing everything that we can in our power to follow the divine guidance that's coming in, that's leading us each step of the way, to take steps to set ourselves up for success, right? To set ourselves up for stability and um, to have a, you know, cultivate, a, our kingdom and have that in order and cultivate, um, 
nurturing environment for ourselves and positive habits and routines um, that feed us and that heal our hearts. All right, guys, I am excited to eat this turkey and ginger dish. My hands are, are still burning, but they're starting to like subside now a little bit. And yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your week. I'll see you tomorrow for Totally Tuesday and stay good, but don't be too good. Ciao.